Good morning. It's <clears throat> Saturday, 8 a.m. That's noteworthy because it's a time that I rarely see. Wifey and I are retired and uh, we generally stay up late and sleep in until we get up. Yesterday, I'm excited though, that's why I'm up early. Uh, yesterday, I got up at 4 a.m. And we drove five and a half hours one way to Hamilton, Ontario to pick up. It's not easy being green over there. And I'm excited to uh, put this thing to work. <clears throat> I'll show you the attachment I put on and how I got that fixed in. I played with it last night. Uh, yeah, I got home at uh, 9 p.m. and uh, pretty excited to get get this thing to work. So that's a lot of trouble to go to to buy a machine, and uh, the price I paid. Brian to James, Avant executive, slandered and defamed me. And prevented me from buying it. And I gotta tell you, I feel aggrieved. Uh, after what I went through this year for this company executive. To uh, tell everybody I'm a criminal and I'm trying to rip them off. It's just not right. However, on to uh, more positive things. I'll show you the connection I made. It's kind of cool the way the hydraulics are cut. And I'll show you the job I got to do today. So, I'll go into the more detail about this in a future video. Uh, basically, the hydraulic connection is really slick. Um, and then they made up an adapter plate for me that you can't tell. But basically, from this point on, is the adapter plate because they have a proprietary hydraulic system. So this is uh, the adapter plate they made up for me for the skid steer attachment. Not cheap. Holy. Uh, but <clears throat> you get what you pay for and hopefully everything's good. Like I connected it last night. Lickety split. No problem. The hydraulics work on it. So that's all good. So let's go take a look at the job for the day. Not crazy about the color, it's not black and red, but it's growing on me. <laughs> and uh, right off the bat, I could tell you the machine takes a little bit of getting used to with the steering. Um, it's just different. I'm not gonna say it's good or bad, it's different. It just takes getting used to. I think there's a potential for maybe, uh, having a collision with something because this part swings out quite a bit. This guy, let's go check it out, come on. Beautiful day at Bacon Ranch. Isn't that right? So, this is sort of a necessary job, but it is necessary because it's a dangerous situation. I could just put the firewood processor on and process right from that pile, but, um, I still have to do the wiring on the processor to make sure that it's going to function properly inside the cab with the uh, factory switches. So I'm going to get the grapple bucket that you see is already attached to the machine and just move these logs over there. Um, the intent, like I say, was to process them right here. but. This is almost a vertical wall, and 
uh, with the processor, if I grab the wrong one, the whole thing's going to come down and possibly break the machine or break, break the processor or break the uh, loader. So I'm going to come in, like I say, with the grapple. I can come in on both sides. It has a telescopic boom, which would be nice. Be nice to test the uh, lifting capacity of the machine. That's where I process down there. So this is one area that I do the work in. I have another area. But yeah, spitter patter. Let's get at her. All right, buddy. So another thing about the uh, Avant Corporation, they're fairly new. I think they've been around 10 years. I never heard of them before. Um, <clears throat> the corporate setup is, I, I think they're probably unaware and pretty proud of themselves, but basically, you know, cause I'm in Canada, we're a smaller market. They basically want to dictate who I deal with to get, to take away my freedom of choice. Now there are price fixing laws in Canada that I'm pretty sure they're breaking because there is everybody's charging the same price and that's pretty sure that's price fixing so <clears throat> not only did brian did james slander and defame me to keep me off the market from buying his own machine the company itself i think is probably fine with it because they're pretty fascist they want to tell me who I should buy from, take away my freedom of choice, make it so that I have to pay the asking price. Um, so I ended up driving all that way. And it turns out that I'm in no man's land. Um, nobody really owns my market because nobody really cares about it. And also turns out that uh, I, uh, I had an address um, in the market I bought from uh, anyway, for, for another reason, I was moving and it didn't work out. So <clears throat> I did have a legal address there. So, um, and I know people in the area. I mean, I could just use their address if it matters. There's always a way around it. But what happens, you know, if I, if I buy one market and I move is the dealers in my area they're not going to service it now or you know i don't know i just don't understand why the company would take away my freedom of choice pretty aggrieved about that and i'm really aggrieved about this brian de james slandering and defaming me uh let me know in the comments should i do something about it do i have a legal remedy the amount of grief he cost me was substantial the amount of time he wasted the substantial um, I ended up overpaying I ended up being the hardest working guy in the transaction and it prevented me from getting my business going and the amount of stress it caused me because I didn't know what was going on <laughs> I was I had a couple of days there. I was physically sick because I could not, for the life of me, buy a machine. And uh, that was a missing piece of the puzzle that really makes things make sense. But I, I just can't, I still can't imagine. I'm, like, I'm just perplexed. Why would the company executive go around and tell all his dealers that I'm a scam artist? I don't know. Something's got to be done, I think. Somebody's got to make it right. Let me know in the comments what you think I should do. Pretty dirty. So I got most of the stuff figured out. 
Went over the light switches last night. It's pretty impressed with some of the light illumination. Trying to work out some of these things. The uh, this is the diff lock. Doesn't seem to be working as it should, but I'm not sure if I understand the way it works. Pretty sure when the uh, switch is on, there's supposed to be a light saying it's on, and that light's not working. But I can feel that it's working. Um, so I'm gonna have to take a look at that, I suppose. This uh, picture is the on off switch for the uh, electrical components of an attachment. I'll have to do the wiring from my firewood processor. Turn the radio off there. That's for the boom. This is for operating your attachment, the hydraulics. All uh, three of those switches do the same thing without the electrical component. So let's get at her. So my initial thought about this is, uh, like I mentioned before, the steering is weird. It's different. It probably just takes getting used to. But it seems like you got to really half on this wheel to make small adjustments. It's definitely not like a skid steer. It's definitely more steering work than a tractor. I'm not sure how that's going to go when I'm firewood processing because there is a lot of... Uh, back and forth, um, picking up the log, cutting it and placing it where you're going to split it, so that'll be interesting. But it's inter the good point of it is that you are sitting on the front of the articulation, so your load and your attachment is always in front of you. Now I'm going to put the camera down and get to work. I, I think I'll uh, set up a tripod and show you guys, but I just want to make sure that uh, I can knock that down before I go and uh, record a huge accident and have a log come through the windshield or something or damage my brand new $100,000 dirty machine. Corporate officials try to keep me from buying. <laughs> Right up. <clears throat> Got a lot of forward and work at the same time. I'm picking up from the other side, from the roadside, because I just don't feel safe doing anything here because I grabbed the wrong one and that whole pile is going to come tumbling down. Uh, and I'm learning the machine. <clears throat> so this is the second load. I, uh, first one had two logs as well. Two logs is nothing. The uh, machine doesn't even blink. Yes. <clears throat> That's a lifting capacity of. Uh, over 4,000 pounds, I think it was 4,700 pounds. Uh, so yeah, two logs should be nothing. I'm interested to see how it operates with a full bucket. Once I can get a full bucket of logs in there, <clears throat> hopefully four to six. Let's see how it extends. Pretty good. That's all right. So basically, I don't know if you can see my feet, but there's two pedals. The left pedal is backwards, and the front pedal is forwards. self-leveling bucket. Now, I'm pretty impressed. I wish I would have got this on video, so I wanted to push that down so the logs on the other side would tumble, and they did, but you can see it's a mess. But with the boom fully extended, I got uh, quite a bucket full here, 
and the machine's not even blinking. I got three or four big logs in my grapple, and uh, I don't really want to do this one-handed. And I'm on a slope too, eh? I'm in the ditch. The reach uh, is not much, that boom, but it allows me to pile logs further back from the end, and uh, yeah, really getting used to it. These are 16 foot logs. Uh, I had one big diameter one in this one and this one fell, but it handles it with ease. Thing I like about the dash, I don't know how well this is picking up on camera, is there's lots of room here for putting your phone. There's a couple shelves there, there's one down there, it's a nice area here for putting stuff. You got the ledge there, really like that. We got a little netting here, storage area. I like the uh, I like that because keys and uh, a couple tools on there, place for my phone. So, this is what I was concerned of. Is coming down like these were hanging off the side so I picked them from the side and I had a bucket full that I had to drop them because I got hung up I had stuff in behind the machine I couldn't get over uh, probably could if I want to abuse the machine but I've only had it for less than an hour so and really you're better off just to get out I moved those by hand so now I'll pick these up individually uh, but yeah, I'm liking the looks of that a lot better now. So what I found out about the steering is you can't dry steer it. Like, you can't have a machine sitting and be turning. You have to be moving forward or backwards as you're steering. And hopefully the amount you're moving forwards or backwards and the speed is greater than what you're turning then it turns better. It's still a learning curve. But I... I like it. I wish... Uh, I can't wait to get in there and grab like six. I think this machine's not even going to blink. That's can't wait to get the processor on. Stop and take this. Record this tape. Uh, that's a good... That's a good load. Now I lost one log over there from the pile, but uh, five, six, seven, eight logs. And it was at its limits. Uh, when you're articulated, you lose your capacity and it was a little tippy as I was going back with pretty good speed, trying to be nice and smooth. So I learned that when you're at your limits, and you do have to steer nice, slow, smooth movements, and you should be fine. Just did this like a champ. So there's the one I lost there. That's uh, that's impressive. I like that. Oh, this puts a big smile on my face. That's, uh... That's a good amount of weight there. Now, as I mentioned before, when you articulate, you lose your lifting capacity and you can get tippy, so... Smooth movements. So I'm going to extend the boom here safely over the pile. Look at that. It doesn't even blink. I don't even feel those in the machine. I'm 
been smiling. That's nice. When you can pick up uh, six, eight logs like that in your bucket, it sure saves a lot of time and work a lot of trips. The pile's getting smaller. It's getting there, it's getting there. Stopped again. I just wanted to get out and uh, wow, I'm impressed. This little machine that weighs less than 6,000 pounds is just a beast. This is not level ground either, and I'm doing a lot of articulating, which reduces the capacity. I don't feel unsafe at all on this slope. The slopes to the right, super stable. When I did this, uh, when I tried doing this with the Kubota M7060 front end loader, with the huge snowblower on the back as a ballast for counterweight, I felt so tippy, like I was gonna have a horrible accident. Wow, I'm so happy with this thing so far. Uh, <laughs> I've made short work of this. I, I think I've been at it for an hour and uh, really happy just it just pushes into the log the pile of logs so easily it has six logs on there 16 footers small diameter but so stable so there it is from behind me is where that wood pile was that's all clear I apologize for not stopping and setting up a tripod I think I said before, for anybody that has watched me before, I like to work. I just like getting it done. I'm not one of these posers that's pretending that I just decide to do something, but you got seven cameras set up. When I just decide to do something, take my word for it, I've just decided to do it. And I like to just work. Um, but, you know, I know if I want to grow my channel, I'm going to have to take the time out and set up cameras and do that kind of stuff and I'll get there just need some more subscribers um, and also I buy and pay for everything I review I'm not gonna pretend that I bought something like a big orange excavator and do some soft sell on you and tell you why you should go in debt and buy one because I got one for free so that you would take debt on. Uh, no, I know a guy that's doing that. Sell all kinds of brand new machines, Kubota excavator and stuff. And I don't know for sure, but to me, there's no way he's bought them and uh, he's doing some soft selling. None of my concern, I don't do that. That machine, really cool <laughs> that's the Avant went through that wood pile for no problem so I've worked on it for I don't know two hours got 11 hours on the meter <clears throat> there's the pile behind me that I made I would like to maybe next time take more time and build a higher pile instead of long and with the telescopic boom, I can do that. You could see in this area here where I was using the green machine, it's higher than back there where I was using the orange machine. So now I'm gonna go take a break and uh, see about hooking up the firewood processor. I gotta figure out the wiring on it so that I can use the uh, stock or the optional buttons that are on the joystick we got four functions there at least I need five uh, we have to see how that's gonna work out so far so good man at, at, at the end there I don't know if I got enough video to show you but I was getting some big bucket loads of logs I would love to get another machine like this, a smaller machine, for my wife to work with a grapple and uh, pick up little logs and the stuff that drops and 
Uh, maybe load the processor when I have it working on here. Just need a sponsor. <laughs>